Welcome, welcome, welcome to AI for Educators. We've done a bunch of AI, just straight AI sessions, different types of AI sessions. We were doing this before it became really popular. So Ken is here to add to our amazing AI collection of information. So I cannot wait. So many people want to just know what it is, how to, what do we, how's it going to affect education? So I'm ready for this. So you may say, well, who are you, woman? Well, hello. I am Dr. Desiree Alexander. I am the founder CEO of Educator Alexander Consulting. And if you're watching us live, hello, hello. If you are watching us on the YouTube channel, no, you don't get a certificate, but you do get the knowledge. Right underneath the video, you will find the resource for today. If you're here live, the resource is in the chat. I will post it again. And remember, you can get a certificate, but only, only, only if you fill out the evaluation at the end. Next Saturday, we have Dr. Marlin coming on back. She's kind of our resident SPED presenter. She comes and presents on all types of SPED content, but now she's going to be talking about the keys to successful classroom management. So come on back next week and register for that. Then we have AmpliWave, Learning Amplified. So that's going to be April 13th. Then library schedules that work, flexible or on the block, April 20th. Finishing the year strong, ideas to boost student engagement on April 27th. Ready, set, record, getting started with video production projects in elementary school on May 11th. Then we have the ISTE conference. Oh, I'm, I just make this year sound so fast, right? So ISTE conference in June. And these are the sessions I'm going to have so far, but definitely we'll be adding to that list. Then we have library collaboration, leadership, and mentoring, July 13th. Level up career moves in librarianship. So I think we have our resident library presenter, and I'm a former librarian, so I love it. And this isn't until October 5th, and y'all, we are still adding to our list for this year. I just got about two that we already got scheduled. They're just not out yet. So we always have our self-paced courses. If you're in a state that uses the Educational Leadership Test, SLLA, uh, Google certification, support time to talk to me, all that kind of stuff is always on the website. And notice you can register for all these things at edalex.net slash events. And last but not least, if you have a webinar that you want to present or you have one that you want to learn, you're like, Desiree, please do this topic, find someone. Let me know. So you can find this at that same link to let me know what you want to learn. Oh, yes, I didn't breathe. Oh, that was a lot. But you know what? I'm talking quickly because this is going to be on video. So you can always go back. You can find everything at one link. And I want to get to what you came here for to talk about AI for educators. Okay. Well, this is going to be a whirlwind tour of AI. And since you'll have access to the slide deck, you'll be able to investigate a lot of the resources I show you. I'm going to demonstrate a few, but since it's such a broad uh, campus or a uh, learning platform that I'll let you, I'll just tell you the capabilities of them and you can explore them on your own. Okay. So, so why AI won't replace teachers? Parents still want human teachers for their kids. The COVID remote learning showed us that a significant number of parents and children did not cope well with remote learning. So direct learners did terrific, but many did not. <laughs> and education is an information delivery system. If it was, the internet, YouTube, Wikipedia, Khan Academy would all have taken over by now. William Butler Gates once said, <clears throat> education is not filling up a pail, but lighting up a fire. <clears throat> AI can provide a human experience. But it's, um, so, you know, play, talking to one another, telling jokes to one another, just friendly conversation. It can't replace that. It can, it can describe human emotions, but it can't really feel the human emotions and the context that's involved in them. And as I said in previously, learning is a social endeavor. It's not, we've heard before, it's not standing on the stage and preaching. 
Okay. So what can AI do for students? This is just a few of the things, and that's the slideshow goes on. I'll, we'll discuss some more. Can help them brainstorm for ideas. So they can put in a topic, uh, put in their own ideas, and ask uh, AI if it has any other ideas to add to the collection of their own. Feedback and editing suggestions. So when they're not in class and they need feedback on their writing or feedback on some explanation of uh, concepts or algorithms or whatever they're learning, they can get instant feedback whether they're in school or out of school. Can review your work. Student could put their work up online and have someone or have a chat bot review it, and give them some suggestions. Reading and writing assistance sort of piggybacks on that, that if uh, you're looking for some reading materials, they can level reading, put it in their own level, can summarize things for them. Tutoring and support could be a personal tutor, can make up a quiz to on a topic and see how the child can does on their own before they get the, the test in class. But it's not for, it can't solve all the problems. It can't care for them, it can't motivate them to learn, it can't be empathetic, it can't understand the nuances of things and provide life guidance. So here's some more. Areas that students could benefit from AI. And essay topics. A lot of times just getting started on the essay could be the most difficult part. So it can give suggestions for essay topics. As I said before, it gives writing feedback. So it's, and since it's well, since they don't have to wait for you to come to class to give them the feedback or wait for you to, to give them feedback online at a later date, they can get it immediately. It could be a math tutor gives you step, not only could solve problems, it usually gives you step-by-step step how the problem was solved. It gives research, it gives a, besides the internet, a database, they have databases where they also can include research. S simplify a complex idea or a text. So something is at a high school level, you need to simplify it, no problem. Debug code. Sometimes that's the hardest part of coding is finding your mistakes. And presentations. It can help them make the presentations more interactive. So how does it benefit teachers? It can be a research assistant. Help teachers find relevant academic resources, articles, information on various topics. It can even create articles for you if you want. If you give it a topic and give it some parameters, it'll even create an article. Writing support, so you always can't get to your students writing to give them feedback right away. You can do a question and answer session. You can organize a virtual question and answer session where the chat bot will answer the questions related to the course content, clarifications or further explanations. Language practice, great for foreign language practice. Some chat box let them have the capabilities of speaking into them and getting the response back orally also. Lesson planning, designing, correct. Put in lessons that you've taught before, asking for suggestions, then pick and choose, cherry pick what you think is valuable for you. Streamline your workflow, tutorials, translations. If you need jokes or illustrations or analogies of something you wanna give. It can produce songs, interactive presentations, can have stories. You might be teaching something in science and you want maybe a fairy tale that exemplifies that concept or in history. Um, so these are all different ways that almost instantaneously can produce these things for you. Some more teacher workflow options, create learning materials, quizzes, study guides, lecture notes, materials tailored specific needs and interests of students. We've, you know, we've heard about differentiation for years, but it's easier to philosophically agree with it and pull it off at the same time. To personalize learning paths, you can analyze the student's interactions with a chatbot to identify learning preferences and areas for improvement, adapt learning teaching strategies accordingly to provide learning experiences. Debate discussion monitor. You can debate with the chat box. And I will mention also, when you debate 
when person is, you can debate orally with some chat boxes, but usually with text. And that gives people that are sort of reticent to talk up in front of class a chance to participate. Feedback and assessment, incorporate feedback and assessment process in a timely fashion, helping students understand their strength and growth. And grant writing, sometimes that can be really intimidating when you get a 20 page grant that form you have to fill out, or you can upload the grant to a chat box and help, and they can give you suggestions of what to put in those areas with some of your prompts. So this is just sort of an overview of the different areas that teachers can uh, use AI for. And this is a link down at the bottom. will take you to 30 common, most common used AI tools. So you'll be able to click on that when you get the slide deck. So let's look at chat bots first. So just a quick overview how quickly these have come upon the scene. Um, Chatbot, when it came out last December, a uh, year ago, December, um, it only took two months to get 100 million viewers compared to TikTok nine months and so on up the line. So it's really come upon us quick. Sometimes it's been intimidating for teachers to accept it or school administrators to accept it, but it's here. <laughs> Hang on, we have a question. Go ahead. As a teacher of, an, of Arabic, for non-native speakers, does it support the Arabic language? And if at what, and if so, at what stage? I'm not sure what stage, but uh, depending on the chat box you use, like I'll go over a few of the chat box now, but chat GPT does some languages, more languages are accepted in um, Copilot and Gemini. And I'll review those in a few minutes. Chatbot, uh, Gemini and Copilot are extensive. I think 40 languages they have that they can eliminate. But the thing you have to be aware of is that um, most of the information is very Western oriented. So you really have to, ask whether it's, you just have to be careful about misinformation, misinterpret or biases because the data that's mined for these chat box is, is very uh, Eurocentric. Okay. So then a question, ChatGP was the first to come out. A lot of them have built upon ChatGPT, and we'll go over a few of those in a few minutes. ChatGP has a memory feature, and I'll show you that in a minute if you, if you go to settings. And what the memory feature does, you put in some of your background information about yourself. So when it answers questions, it knows a little bit about you and what you might be interested in with its responses. And if you have a smartphone, you can talk back and forth. So it's great for language learning. Well, let me go back a page. Let me. Okay, so this is what the interface of ChatGP works for. Okay. And here you click on here when you want to start a new chat. Your previous chats are listed over on the sides. I mentioned the memory feature. If you go down here to the lower left corner, and click on Customize Chat GPT. Here you put information about yourself and what uh, what kind of things you're looking for in Chat what kind of responses you want. So it sort of fine tunes it to your needs. Okay. So down here is where you put in your response, and the more detailed you are, the better responses will become. So, for example. Um, Oops. Then you go over here and you click. And it gives you some information. But this is at the end of the conversation. It's it's an ongoing conversation. It remembers what it said before. So say you want more clarification. Um,
and and the continued thing like All right, I misclicked on that one. But then anyway, the point is here, you want to get as detailed as possible. You might want it great to include what grade level you want this written at. Say, I'm a, I'm, this is for a first, fourth grader, fifth grader, high school person. So you give that information so it is it knows some kind of context and what level to put things in. Okay. So Microsoft Copilot it used to be called Bing. And one of the advantages of, of Copilot is that it owns like 49%, Microsoft owns 49% of open chat GPT. So uh, you're getting chat, the advanced ver version of chat GPT 4 is the most updated version and it has the most precise information. And you get that, you have to pay extra thing, $20 a month for that. But if you use Copilot, you get it for free. Kind of before we go directly into Copilot, we have two questions uh, for the just kind of regular chat GPT. Does it save the chat? Yes, over on the left hand side, it saves your chats. And then can it provide auto correction? By auto correction, do you mean grammar and spelling type of thing? I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, it does give you, if you make, like I made some spelling mistakes, it gave me the correct spelling for them, you know. Or okay. it, it might say something's unclear, could you restate that in a different way? Thank you. Okay. So one of the, some of the advantages of uh, Bing, it does in, involve um, producing pictures. And which ChatGP doesn't do as of, as of yet, but it's probably it'll probably get there very soon. And Copilot uh, also has well, it has access to Dali E if you're familiar with it. That's a text to image uh, AI tool that costs money, the prescription, but you get it for free if you use Copilot or if you go to Bing Image Creator. So it's multiple understanding combines text, images, and web data to provide contextual information. So it's a little, it's more, a little, it's more sophisticated than ChatGPT three point five, which is I just showed you. It's, it's much better at coding and math strings. Copilot excels at coding, data analysis, calculation, visualization. So if you upload a database and ask it to and give it some parameters of what you want it to analyze, it'll do it for you. Copilot can create original music and images using the latest AI models. Has video capabilities. Copilot can summarize or answer questions about videos. So you type in a URL and ask it <clears throat> to summarize it or make up questions. It can do that for you. You have to specify. You want open-ended questions. You want true and false questions, multiple choice. No. So let's take a look. While you're getting there, can it search photographic sources and maps? No, but the next Gemini can do that, which is the next one I'm going to show you. Okay. Thank you. So it's similar data to ChatGPT. Down here, there is um, a text box where you can put in your questions. So.
So it's amazing how quick that it can finish. And it, well, it doesn't have give you access to the internet. It does give you some links and some, some other resources to the internet. But to take this a step further, say, um, Here's a misspelling. Okay. Sometimes it doesn't give you the pictures the first time around. You have to have to repeat it again. So let me see. Sure. Okay. Well, it's not showing it, but usually this is not an issue. But another aspect that that uh, Copilot has is these plugins down here. So one of them one that is uh, Sumo. Su Sumo will make up songs for you. So if you put, you have to put it on at the beginning before you do the actual chat. So say, right. Okay. The other things you might include write write a a fairy tale or a story that includes alligators in it or crocodiles meeting one another. You might want a poem about alligators and crocodiles. Okay. Let me try once more with pictures. Well, you're gonna to have to take it as a leap of faith that this is not usually a problem. <laughs> okay, let's let's go on to the one more to next chat box, which is Gemini, and this personally is my is my favorite. Whoops. Okay, so. Over here is where you start the new chat. The other ones was down at the bottom where there was a new chat. Okay. So.
while you're doing that, we have a couple of questions. Is this free also? Yes. Can we use any of these so far to create lesson plans? Yes, okay. and we're going to talk about lesson plans a little later. And not only can you do lesson plans, they can create whole units for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I know the rest of the questions you're going to get to. So thank you. I'll show you here's some video options. Now, Gemini has a, you can speak right in here to Gemini for people that can't, uh, are slow at typers or young children who have trouble typing or people have some disabilities. Here, you can, you can listen to what it says. You click on this and it'll speak it out. Sure. Here are some name of videos for each type of lever. Okay. So this gives you that option in, uh, Chat GPT, you had to use a smartphone if you wanted this function of audio function. And uh, since Chat uh, Copilot and Gemini are an upgrade from Chat GP, the free Chat GPT, that you get more accurate information. Uh, and Gemini. Copilot and ChatGP only give you will give you information up to 2022, but uh, Gemini gives you much more information, up to date information, and it also uh, has these, op these options at the bottom, and one of them is to put it and rewrite the whole thing shorter, longer, simpler, more casual, more professional. So it gives you those options. Okay. And up here should be, but for some reason it's not showing up. It gives you a button that says drafts, and it gives you three other drafts of the same article. So you don't have to put in uh, clarification. You still may need clarification prompts, but this might give you the solution much quicker. Okay. So once again, draft option in the right hand corner, for some reason, weren't showing up today, but up here, I mean, it'll give you three draft options. Math problems is much better in chat GPP with math problems. And it also gives you the steps for solving the problems. And at the bottom, I showed you a button to compare different results. It gives you a, access to Google right away. So if you want to validate the information, you can click on a Google link and it'll tell you what websites they came from. You can paste a YouTube link in there give you the transcript, we can summarize it, can even create guided notes for the YouTube, and can even do questions. It also, it integrates with Google Docs, Google Slides, and Google uh, Spreadsheets. Okay. More features for Gemini. It's very good with the languages, more, it offers more languages than chat, GGP, or Go Pilot. You can upload your own image there and set and ask questions and have it ask questions about the images. Okay. It's like I said before, it's similar to Jat GP4, which costs $20 a month. It's better understanding it, new ones and context. It can now generate images. Click three dots at the bottom, right? And you get some other options, and I'll go back and show you those. Use images as prompts, so you can upload an image as a prompt. And I showed you can read things out loud before. So let's go back.
And one thing you have to be aware of, especially with ChatGPT, is you know, psych resources sometimes, and they're completely physicians. They're called hallucinations. Uh, they look authentic, but you need to tell so you need to check out citations and make sure they're valid when you when you do them again. And here you can do it. You can go right into Google right away, and it'll check them for you. Claude is, it doesn't have as much capabilities as some of the other ones, but what it's very good at is understanding human language and nuances. And it's also supposed to be the most accurate as, as far as its information goes. And it, and it claims it's the most ethical and it avoids bias as much as possible. So that's something you might want to look into. Mizu is made for... Uh, K through eight teachers, and it's got pre-made chat boxes on particular topics, or you can create your own chat box around a particular topic. So it's especially good for younger children. And you don't have to, has a free account for yourself. Students don't have to sign in themselves. Like I said, there's pre-made AI chat box on particular subjects or topics. All you have to do is share the link and participate in the activity. So the chat box, pre-made ones already have activities to go along with information about a particular topic. Like I said, you don't have to sign in and you can monitor their interactions as a teacher. And it can also have the options to create a, a quiz afterwards and gives you a summary of how they did. That's up to you whether you want to take that. Perplexity doesn't have a lot of uh, bells and whistles to it, but it's a great for research, very authentic information validates all its resources for you. It provides suggestions of other resources to look at. So this for high school and college age, this is a terrific re academic resource for doing search. Com information is very comprehensive, okay. We have to remember that it has misinformation and bias. It's skewed towards Western views. It mines data that is trained and may have misinformation in it. So doesn't understand context very well. And misinformation, it may even make up information, hallucinate. So never want to admit it's wrong. So it's important that the whole uh, aspect of dealing with AI is being a good prompt engineer. And there's so typically you provide a prompt written in conversational language. Whoops, let me go back. And you, and like I said before, when I go into different chats, you want to keep the conversation going to get more detailed and more detailed as possible until you get a response that is satisfactory to you. So this is one method of addressing prompts. Introduce the question in the prompt. Give it a role or a voice. Say it's for a fifth grade teacher. I am a high school physics teacher. <clears throat> Be very explicit with your instructions. The more details you get, the better response you get. Set parameters in your answer. Do you want it bullet pointed? Do you want it only uh, five paragraphs or uh, 200 words long? Evaluate when you get your responses and you need to evaluate it. Determine the accuracy and collaborate with the sources. Look for biases and misinformation and transform content into adjustments and making new finds. So you keep refining, you keep refining. And if this poster, if you click on this link here, you can get this poster printed out. This is another way to attack prompts. Define your end goals. Is there any goals you need to do or any, like, tell her your responses. Mimic a style, a structure. Say you want a very casual style. You can upload an example of, say, I would like it in the style written that this article, this story is written in. Embody specific expertise. 
say, you know, explaining who you are and what you're looking for. Do you want a bow tie, mark tam? You want it in a table format. Usually, if you're going to make a rubric, you want to specify you want the rubric in a table format. Add a layer of emotional content. Do you want it to be something sad, upbeat? And you want these explained better, there's a link down here that you can look at later. So some str some strategies. This is what I talked about in the previous slide, but this gives you a little more detail on how to do it. Remember, the clear instructions. If there's steps involved, tell them to complete the steps. Provide exam If you want it to be similar to something else, give them examples of what you want it to be similar to. You can upload, it's in uh, Gemini and Copilot, you can upload a PDF or a website and ask it to ask questions about it. Uh, there's a limit how much text you can insert in a chat box. So long uh, <laughs> documents you might want to do piece by piece. Give the chat box time to think. Okay. Use external tools for coding tasks. Test changes systematically. Evaluate a checks box output and reference called standard answers. And these are 40 proven AL prompts for teachers. And just to give you an idea, if you're new to this prompt engineering, just how to set up a prompt that'll effectively give you good responses, okay? So here's some, I'm gonna show you some examples of prompts. This is a very simple one, teach a blank grade student about blank using the voice of blank. So for example, teach a fifth grader student about thermodynamics using the voice of Darth Vader. A little more sophisticated, I'm a 12th grade teacher of advanced placement in US history. I want the students to learn about people in the American Revolution, relate to historical figures to characters in the Harry Potter series, give details that relate them so I can better explain these historical figures and how they help. So this could, you know, to make something more engaging, just give it some uh, nuance that will engage. Write a story about a young adventurer who discovers a hidden treasure in a mysterious cave. Use vivid imagery and descriptive language to bring the setting and characters to life. Focus on creating suspense and excitement throughout the story. So you just don't have to say write a story, you know, write an adventure story about alligators or whatever. You want to get into what you want that story to include. Write a two or three real world scenarios to help me teach the concept of whatever. You can, what if you wanted to gamify your classroom around Pokemon? So you would like a Pokemon game around the topic of X, Y, Z. So you, you want it to give you a step-step outline, how to gamify my third grade unit on a topic of measurement and data. Include the subtopic of converting light measurement units. You can have a debate <laughs> with the chat bot. For example, is the United States a true democracy? And these are things you're going to want to include in an opening statement. It gives you some information about what to include in an opening statement. Rebuttals, both sides will have the opportunity to rebut the opposing arguments presented in the opening statement. Each side should address the key points and so on. Cross-examination, fifth grade student will engage in cross-examination where they question what the chatbot has said and, and defend their side. Closing arguments, the chatbot will give a closing argument, fifth grade will give a closing argument. That followed up with a, an audience Q&A. And a neutral moderator will oversee the debate proceedings and ensuring fairness, adherence to time limits, and respectful change of ideas. So you can get pretty sophisticated in how you handle it. Now, as a corollary to that, there is an AI tool called Character AI, and it has dozens and dozens of historical figures, once again, mostly Western. So things that might ask these cultural figures, what are they most famous for? Debate with them the consequences of their work. Ask about their own work, relates to today's world. You can also, <clears throat> in this one, you can also create your own character and give it a personality and will develop a chat box responses to a person with that personality. So once again, the more specific and detailed you are with your input, the more specific and detailed your output would be. 
And these are some links to different prompt suggestions, 100 prompts for teachers, to ask chat box, prompt engineering for educators, and it'll walk you through and give you suggestions about prompts for different topics, and they're adaptable. And this is my website where I have a, a plethora of prompt engineering suggestions. Okay. Any questions on prompts? No? Okay. So no. lesson plans. Lesson plans. These are things you might consider when you're putting in a lesson plan in a chat box. Instructional method. You want a blended learning, flipped instruction. Subject standards, so whatever st standards you want included, include those standards in your description of the, le the lesson you want. Technology standards, what kind of framework you want to be teaching under, like universal design for learning. A any kind of educational theory, like constructivism. Essential, is there an essential question you want to be dealt with in that lesson? Do you want an assessment? Uh, what, how do you want the assessment done? Active participation. Uh, routines, formative assessment, giving some students some agency. Do you want them to have choice boards, flipgrid assessment? Do you want them to use specific uh, tools like Canva or Book Creator? So you, the more details you give about what you want in that lesson, the better. And it will also create units for you also. So I'm not going to go over all of these, but <clears throat> these are some examples of different way, different things you can use in lesson planning. Like, newsletters, creating assessments, um, spreadsheet formulas. So let me just pick one to look at. So let's look at this example. So it gives you sort of a template for a lesson plan prompt. It gives you an example prompt here. It gives you the output for the example that this person used to create it. So it's pretty extensive. You might, if you want some feedback examples, these are two examples of feedback of your, if you want sometimes your own writing, if you're writing something for a group or a professional development, you want them to evaluate yours writing. Once I mentioned before, you can use it to tra get transcripts or create study guides and summaries and more from, from YouTube. Easily get this transcript. This is a, a site. Instead of going to ChatGP or one of the other chatbots, this one is a sort of qu a quicker way to get to uh, the transcript. Other ways that you might want to use in lesson plans, personalized assignment, you know, for a particular type of student or a particular student individual. You want to set up tutoring assistance. Say in my, less, in my lesson or my unit plan, I want tutoring for a fourth grader on X, Y, and Z. So you can set up a, it'll set up a question and answer period can be part of your lesson plan. Role playing, which I haven't mentioned before, it can give you role play suggestions. It's either role playing scenarios based on historical events, scientific experiments, or literary work. Can assign, if you want to, it can assign the roles for students facilitate dialogues, virtual science lab experiments, simulate a virtual science lab experiment where students can input variables and hypotheses and you get, get as specific as you want. This is a link at the bottom here. We'll take you to a step-by-step step step through setting up a lesson plan. This, this is one of the pages from that guide. So. And these are some more prompts to try out for lesson plans. So writing is an issue. You know, what is cheating? What is plagiarism? So this is a guide to the extreme. The extreme would be AI does a student's work for them with no thought by a student. Okay. And then it goes, and what are you willing to accept? So let's start in the middle. AI guides the students through the writing process as a writing coach, or students create contact until stuck and ask the AI for help to get unstuck. Student writes bullet points to include, but AI writes the draft. So all of these, what are you willing to accept as AI as a support service? 
Okay. This is one way to do AI citation where you require this information and they give you <clears throat> the prompt that they use, where they used it. So this is kind of an informal, but you can get MLA uh, citations done also. And in my website, I give you some examples of places where to get more academic citations. So this, the next two uh, tools I'm gonna show you are sort of the supermarket of AI tools. So they have, EdgeAid has over a hundred resources and learning objects to generate, substitute planner, IEP outline, team building activities, uh, let's see what else, assessment measures, learning objectives, slide outlines, mock study, so. Magic School AI is also has some very creative tools. There's a if you pay for the pay version, there's even more than 40. So it can be assignment scaffolders. You can give an assignment and scaffolder for different levels. Common misconception generator. So you put a topic in and it gives you uh, suggestions of where misconceptions often occur when teaching that concept. Good for math story word problems. Sometimes they're hard to come up with or they seem very contrived when you make them up yourself. Rubric generator. Make it relevant. So topic gives you some relevant inf information and relevant ideas to make a topic more engaging. Text leveler. It gives you AI resistant assignment bot. So types of assignments, it'll give you suggestions for assignments that don't depend on the AI at all. Conquer generates quizzes, which, which you can do in a chat bot also, but this has some other capabilities. The quiz can come from a topic, a source, so you can upload a source, like a PDF or an article or a quiz bank. Questions can include multiple choice, fill in the blanks, and it also has open-ended. Quizzes can be exported to Google Forms. Formative, another wonderful, uh, assessment, formative assessment tool. When it gives you a math problem, it shows you the different steps. Formative questions, provides hints, which, which is a good uh, capability that other uh, quiz makers don't usually have, the hint feature. CurePod, if you have create interactive lessons, it's like Nearpod on steroids. If you like, if you use Nearpod to create presentations or interactive presentations, this takes it up a step further, really powers it up. You can do questions, polls, word clouds, drawings, and open questions. So it's just, after the students have answered particular questions or responded, it gives you a word cloud of all their responses. It has also the option to create your own lessons or have one created for you. So if you want a lesson, in a presentation form, you just type in, I would like a, a lesson on X, Y, and Z, and it's editable. So even though it, it provides you all the slides for it, you can edit them or add your own slides and make corrections. It has a feedback feature. It enables you to provide students with immediate feedback on their written answer during class time. So if you're a Nearpod advocate, definitely look at this because this takes it quite a bit further up. This, Got feedback, another form of assessment tool. Can analyze documents, narrative structure, details in the writing, claims in the writing, use of evidence in the writing. So also enter a custom aspect. So if, it gives, if there's a particular feedback you want, if you want to have a focused area of feedback, you can put that in there and say, I want you to focus on adjectives, whatever. And at the end, it gives you a written evaluation of your writing. Twee creates questions for your YouTube video. It can also create dialogues, stories, articles on any topic or level. So if you don't have an article, it'll create an article for you. It creates questions for all these dialogues, stories, and articles. It creates activities to go with them. It 
it's, it's often used with, with English teachers who are teaching ESL classes. Okay, big image creator. So this is what Copilot uses to create images. Create still pictures from a simple text description, and the more detailed you get, you want it in the form of a watercolor, a Picasso, you want it uh, black and white. So the more details you can get what you want in the description. Do you want a, a facial picture? Do you want a whole body picture? And once again, if it's not what you want, then you you continue with your responses to, to refine it. Like I said, Dolly E is a subscription service and it uses, you get Dolly E for free because Microsoft owns part of Dolly. I said, I mentioned it didn't work for us today, but usually I have no problem with it using it in a chat box. And this is a game to give you practice creating prompts to generate a specific image. Scribble diffusion. So you do a sort of a scribble of what you want and it turns it into an authentic picture. So there's a text to image creators and, and scribble diffusion. Sometimes you need an illustration for something you're talking about or a story you've written or a slideshow or a website or a story starter for students. Canvas Magic Studio, Canva Magic Studio. So if you're an educator, you get the pro version for free. You just have to uh, apply for it on the site. And they have, it has a, <clears throat> quite a few tools. Magic Design, describe what you want to design and have social posts, presentations, or even videos created custom to your idea with magic. Now, when they do, when they create, from your prompt, I'll create a video or a presentation the video is sort of the, the newest part of uh, AI. Most of the vi all the videos will be sort of more of a car cartoonish or animated video. They're not realistic. But Chat GPT just came out last week or two with a video uh, text to video called Soda and Sora rather, and it does realistic movies, but they're only a minute long. And there's no sound, but you can see if you look at Sora, you'll see uh, what the potential is. Magic Write, type in a prompt and what it'll generate teaching content for you. It'll also do lesson plans and worksheets. This will animate, put in any picture and it'll animate it for you. Text to video and images, as I mentioned before. Magic Edit, you get a picture like this and you want to change any aspects of it, you just Select the aspect and say what kind of what do you want it to change to. And uh, previously I talked about differentiation. This is a differentiation specific AI tool. It accommodates students of various reading levels, create text sets that cater to students' interests, visual text and graphic organizers, provide summaries and key vocabulary multiple languages not. so this this takes our teaching up to a new level because differentiation can now be a lot more accessible for you and even if you have to give quite a few different lessons in almost instantaneously it'll create them for you okay. and you can export these to google docs forms and others areas Brisk is another sort of supermarket tool. It's a, when you're working in Chrome, it's an extension. You get a little uh, Brisk icon down in the lower right-hand corner. So when any of these th uh, tools that you want to access, you just click on this Brisk icon. So if you need a prompt or precise feedback on a student assignment, if you have the student sign it up in a Google Docs or PDF or whatever, and you click on Brisk, you get feedback for it right away just by you don't even have to go to the tool it just automatically does it just reading levels of articles you bring up an article click on the brisk icon and you get your chances potential or capabilities for levels and articles it could it, if you click on the brisk you get the option to create materials lesson plans and quizzes 
has an easy grader. You can generate balanced, constructive feedback. So Brisk is a really quick tool. So it's, 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 it'll be always on your desktop. You just have to click on it. But it only use, you can only use it with Chrome. Now, Notebook LM is by Google. And it connects directly to your Google Docs. And it scans your notes to understand your work. So it tries to make sense of your notes. It can summarize your notes. It can, you can answer questions. So if you have a question that somewhere buried in your notes, you want to answer from your notes, it can do it. You can organize your documents like a personal assistant. Great for writers, researchers, students, or anyone who wants to boost their efficiency. Okay. So this brings us to the end. Uh, this is a copy of the slide deck. <clears throat> this is a terrific presentation for high school maybe middle school, on the ethics of AI. This is my website. If you need to contact me, controlart.com. And this, that textbooks are two terrific resources that have AI uh, support and guidelines. So, questions? So we do have one question from the chat, and then I'm going to allow people to hop on the mic. Or if you want to throw your question in the chat, this would be a great time to do it. If you've already asked the question and we didn't get to it, please re-put it in the chat. Or again, I'm going to allow people to hop on the mic in a second. So the question that we had was, do you have any tool or can you suggest a tool to review video? So for example, it would look at the video um, and provide a summary of the video or develop a guide based on the video or yeah, offer you, additional content for the video. Yeah, and I forget the name of it, but it's something, it's something like YouTube Summarizer, I think it's called, and it will do those things. You also, Gemini is very good at it because uh, Google, uh, Google produces Gemini. So if you put the URL in Gemini, it will give you all those uh, options of summarizing questions, guides. The next question is how can I check if content is generated from AI or not? I know my answer, but what is yours? <laughs> you, well, you can, you can put it in an AI, paste it in an AI and say, it's just, was this generated by AI? It's not a hunt, and there are AI, AI detectors, but they're not 100% pure. For example, if someone put in the United States Constitution and said it was created by AI. So the, the tech, usually <clears throat> if it's a student writing, Usually you have a sense as a teacher that the student created or not, but there's no 100% way to, to check it because there's also tools that are made to avoid AI detectors. So it's a touchy sub subject. You have to do a lot of education with your students and the, on the ethics of it, but there's no 100% way to detect it. Agreed. <laughs> Ken, thank you so much. It was such a thorough presentation and I'm so glad that you gave out the slideshow so they can like click on everything so you went through the biases of AI you went through the different resources you can use why teachers use it how to do the prompts like if you're talking about an introduction to AI this is it so thank you so 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 much um, and you gave out all of the resources. So I was like, hey, now you you have a starting point um, in this slideshow to to start, to go ahead and start using AI. So Ken, I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much. All right. Glad to be a help.